What's up everyone? In this video, I'll be providing you a complete up-to-date beginner's guide for Punishing Grey Raven. There's going to be a lot of info in this video, so you're welcome to grab a snack or something to drink and enjoy. Without further ado, let's begin. When you start the game and complete the prelude, your screen will look something like this. Before doing anything else, remember to grab your daily or weekly serum packs and go straight to the main story. If you're a chronic story skipper, no need to worry, the codex will have the story in case you decide to read it later. The main story requires serum to complete, so it's very important you don't spend serum anywhere else other than the main story until you reach level 40. We'll talk about why later in the video. Once you've cleared 1-6 in the story, you'll unlock Nobbins missions. In order to complete Nobbins missions, you'll need to find a guy that's willing to accept you as a student. It can take some time before a mentor picks you up as a student, especially at low level, so I recommend adding a signature right away, like active new player, will do my dailies, or your why. Don't worry about what that means, the guides will know, trust me. Adding a signature before applying for a mentor will increase your chances of a mentor picking you up to be their student. Once you have found a guide or mentor, completing Nobbins missions will provide you with a ridiculous amount of experience, rewards, and 5-star memories. It's a game's way of power leveling new players to catch up with veteran players. But let's go ahead and talk about research and data, aka the gacha system. This gets unlocked once you reach 1-12 in the story, and there's going to be a few banners depending on when you come into the game. However, the banner you're going to want to focus on is the base and debut S rank banners, especially if you're free to play. It's very important to remember never to use your black cards on the base construct banners. Only use basic construct tickets you'll get for free by playing the game. And you're always going to want to save your event construct tickets on debut S rank banners. Never pull on fate banners unless you're spending money in the game, because if you're unlucky, which you most likely will be, you might end up having to reach 80 to 100 pity to pull for the debut S rank character instead of the normal 60. Pet banners are also not worth pulling as a free to play because pulling for them will eat into your black card funds and that means you won't have enough black cards to pity the debut S rank character. You can pull on transcendent banners since you only need to do a 10 pull to get a transcendent but I recommend only pulling if you have enough black cards for the upcoming debut S rank character, or if you just really like that transcendent. It's a game after all. And finally, for weapons. It's the same rule at transcendence, only pull if you have enough black cards for the upcoming debut S rank, or if you acquired free weapon tickets from playing the game. This is what you want to be prioritizing when using your black cards. And for info on drop rates, please refer to the banner's rules, drop details, then swap to rate notice. By now, you should have acquired some base banner construct tickets from completing event missions. You can use these to pick up any character you like, but I recommend going for a dark team and pulling for Watanabe A, Vera A, and number 21. Elemental damage is better in this game since physical damage is very reliant on defense shred and starting the game with this team will get your account on the right path and put you closer to having a team for every element. You'll want to use all your base construct tickets you get from event missions until you reach pity of 40 and get your first S rank character. This will also take some black cards to achieve. I highly recommend reaching the base banner pity before opening your S rank selector that way, you don't end up getting a copy of a character. I suggest using the S rank selector on Live Luminous if you didn't already get it from the base banner pity. Live Luminous will be getting a huge buff in later patches and become the best support for physical teams. Everyone else on the S rank selector can be replaced. Since we're on the subject of team building, it's very important to focus on building one team. If you're following my recommendations, this means you'll want to focus on building your dark team first. To do this efficiently, you'll want to work on getting your attacker to level 80 and your tank and support can stay at level 60. And being this is still very early game, don't worry about leveling weapons or memories past level 25. Just focus on leveling your team up and using skill points on your attacker, your support's healing skill, and your tank's tank class skill. 
Remember to always have a tank in your team, as tanks help with debuffs and provide extra damage reduction to enemies through their tank class skill. Now for the shop. Honestly, the only thing you want to be doing here as a beginner is buying this daily character shard for 20k cogs. This shard is definitely worth buying since you'll need these shards to rank up your B and A rank characters. Once you've cleared 3-8 on the main story, you will unlock another way to obtain B and A rank character shards by completing interludes. Interludes lets you know more of a character's backstory, and when clearing the challenge mode, you will receive two character shards per day for their respective B or A rank character. Because interludes require 30 serum per clear, I recommend doing no more than one or two characters interludes per day, that way you still have serum left to use for other content in the game. Increasing a character's rank not only makes them stronger, but also unlocks a new skill. If you're wondering which B or A rank character you should rank up, here's a list of the characters that are worth ranking up. Feel free to pause to take a better look. Clearing 4-2 in the main story unlocks dorms. Dorms is another way for you to spend time in the game by decorating your construct living spaces. Dorms also have their own dailies, awarding you dorm coins, which you can later use to purchase items in the dorm shop. However, you're going to want to save your dorm coins to purchase either permits to unlock more dorms, or purchase coding sketches and exchange the sketches for coding blueprints, and then use the blueprints to purchase codings in the coding shop. That said, it does take a while to get enough coding blueprints to exchange for a coding, but with some patience you'll have enough to purchase a coding for your favorite character. You can join a guild once you complete 4-5 in the main story. When joining a guild, you and the other members of your guild will gain access to 3 bosses per week, where you have to use specific characters and do the most damage you can before the time runs out. Completing this weekly will provide you with points to spend in the guild's point shop, I highly recommend saving these points and using them to pick up Transcendent Shards. The Guild's Point Shop will let you purchase enough shards to get your Transcendence to SS rank. You'll unlock your first Transcendent at level 52 from the event missions, so in the meantime just save those Guild Points until you reach level 52. Reaching level 35 and clearing 5-7 in the main story will finally unlock your weekly Warzone and Punishing Pain Cage. This is going to be vital to complete every week, as this will provide you with a significant amount of black cards that you'll definitely need if you're planning on pooling for debut S rank characters. As a beginner, you won't be scoring high in these modes since you'll need at least 3 teams for a decent score, so your main focus is going to be completing them for the black cards. It's worth mentioning though, when completing Warzone and Punishing Pain Cages, you will receive currency for the respective modes and how much of the currency you get depends on the high score. For the Warzone shop, I recommend you save your Warzone currency for the 6 star memory resonance material. These materials will let you choose which resonance you want on your character's memories. And for the Pain Cage shop, never spend your skulls on A rank character shards, I highly recommend saving your skulls for S rank character shards. The Pancake Shop will let you purchase enough shards to get any S rank character to SS rank. Here's a list of the S rank characters that gain the most value from their SS rank. At level 35, you'll also unlock Co-op. Co-op is open daily during certain times of the day, so please refer to the in-game banner for the times. I recommend defeating Co-op bosses if you want to work towards obtaining a 5-star weapon for your characters. There is a small chance of getting one as a drop, or you can exchange the weapon shards you're awarded from defeating the co-op bosses in the exchange shop. You'll also need a total of 450 weapon shards to obtain a 5-star weapon. If you get a 5-star weapon for a character that you don't have, you can scrap them for a total of 150 weapon shards. And finally, at level 40, you'll unlock event content. This is going to be very important for progressing your account. Once you're in the event section, you'll want to use the majority of your serum to obtain event currency through the currency farming stages. I recommend using characters that you need to level for these farming stages, as they provide a decent amount of experience. And make sure not to use your serum for the memory stages, it's generally not worth using serum there, since you'll get a lot less event currency, and if you really need 6 star memories, you can just use the currency you get from the currency farming stages to buy the memories you need instead of coping on a 14% chance at a random 6 star memory. 
You can also use the event currency to buy different materials in the shop to build your character roster. For more information on what memories to use on specific characters, I highly recommend visiting the Grey Ravens website. There you'll find everything you need to know on how to build your characters. After level 40, just continue to follow these tips and enjoy the game at your pace. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask in the comment section. The PGR community is very helpful and I'm sure you'll get some great advice. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.